Imagine that you are in an athletic stadium and you and the rest of the large crowd are waiting for the final of the 100 metres race. The tension has been building all afternoon. The runners come, come out into the stadium and start limbering up. To be honest, the winner is almost a foregone conclusion. One person is dominating that particular event and they're almost certain to win it. Equally, there is another competitor who in all likelihood will come last. They have not trained as much as they should have done and as a result, they're not as fit as they need to be. That said, they have turned up for the race and have promised to give it a go. The competitors begin to line up for the start. The favourite takes the middle lane and the runner who is likely to come in last takes one of the outside lanes. And then, just as the race is about to begin, some of the officials come forward and lead the runner destined to finish last down the track towards the winning line. They stop halfway down so that his starting point is now 50 metres from the finish line. Other competitors are also given new start positions at intervals along the track. Only the favourite is left with the full 100 metres to run. He complains loudly to the race organiser that it's unfair and gives the others an advantage they don't deserve. The organiser says that, well, it's his stadium and if he chose, chooses to give people different starting positions, then he will do so. It won't, of course, be much of a race, either for the competitors or for the spectators. And it runs completely contrary to all our expectations. Jesus, however, said something very similar in one of the parables. You can read it in Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16. He used the analogy of the owner of a vineyard who needed workers, presumably to gather in the harvest. He goes early to the marketplace and hires workers and agrees to pay them a denarius for their day's labour. He goes back at nine and twelve and three and hires more workers, agreeing to pay them what is right. Then at 5 p.m., an hour before the day's work will end, he hires yet more workers. At the end of the day, the workers who were hired at 5 p.m., who've done only an hour's work, are given one denarius. The workers who had been hired first have worked, well, maybe 10 or 11 hours longer, so must have been expecting a far greater sum and the single denarius they'd originally agreed to. So when a single denarius was all that they received, they were, well, perhaps quite understandably, disgruntled, and they complained to the owner of the vineyard. They were told by the own owner of the vineyard that they had received what they had agreed to, and if he chose to pay those who had worked less the same, then he had every right to decide what he did with his own money. And the parable ends with those interesting words, so the last will be first, and the first will be last. When reading the parables of Jesus, we need to be careful not to extract from them more meaning than there is actually there. Some commentators have erroneously taken the parables word by word and come up with interpretations that simply don't exist. Nevertheless, when in Jesus' story the vineyard owner returns to the marketplace at 5pm and hires more workers, there is a dialogue that I think allows us to attribute some additional meaning. This is what it says. About five in the afternoon, he, that's the vineyard owner, went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you go also and work in my vineyard. Remember, there's only one hour of working time left. 
so the owner cannot be expecting to get very much out of them. Yet we know they are to receive one denarius for their labour, the same as those who have worked all day. So some commentators interpret that to mean that the vineyard owner had compassion for them. Compassion. Well, that's an interesting word, but one perhaps we need to take seriously. I'm always loath to criticise people in history too much for their actions. After all, customs and social standards vary from generation to generation. But I find it hard to comprehend how some people in the 18th and 19th centuries went to church on a Sunday and heard this or other similar, similar parables, and then on Monday continued their involvement in, for example, the slave trade. Or how some factory owners in the 19th century went to church on a Sunday and for the rest of the week continued to exploit child labour. We might ask ourselves what happened to compassion in those situations. As I said though, I'm loath to spend too much time criticising previous generations, partly because in doing that I might miss the ways in which my own generation fails to have the compassion it should, and as a result fails to do anything about it. Just for starters, we might think about the number of people who go to bed hungry at night while we in the West have more food at our disposal than we can possibly eat. Or we might think of the numerous ways in which our behaviour, often simply for convenience, adds to the threats to the planet, which tends to affect the poor of the world more than it does the rich. The last will be first, and the first will be last. As we know, Jesus often spoke in parables or word pictures. The parables give us some insights into the nature and values of the kingdom of heaven. Not just what we would experience after we have died, but the kingdom of heaven as it is now on this earth. God's desire is for kingdom values to be part of our experience now, for the world to be governed by kingdom values now. The problem is that often the values of the world run contrary to the values of the kingdom of heaven, and no more so than in this parable of the workers in the vineyard. According to the world, and maybe few of us would argue with it, people should be paid fairly, and fairness dictates that wages are commensurate with the effort they have put in. But Jesus appears to say something totally contrary. Those who come late will receive the same as those who have laboured all day. Jesus, of course, is just using wages as an analogy. His meaning is about entry to the kingdom of heaven. And broadly, he is saying that those who confess Jesus as Lord later in life will be treated in exactly the same way as those who have worked tirelessly for the kingdom for all of their lives. We might still find that hard to take, but that is the way it is going to be. Kingdom values turning world values on their head. The last will be first, and the first will be last. Each of the parables gives us an insight, a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven is like. No one parable paints the whole picture, and even we put, when we put them all together, we still have a painting with many gaps. Gaps that will only be filled after we have left this earth. So it is important for us to read the parables and learn from them. Because as we read from them, our understanding of the kingdom of heaven becomes clearer. It is like looking through a pair of binoculars. When you first look through, you may be able to make out some shapes. You may even be able to identify some objects. But it's only when you turn the focus ring that everything becomes clear. The last will be first and the first will be last.
Let us pray. Father, we believe that you have called us to journey together through life and that you are with us on the journey. As we journey with each other and with you, you want us to see the world as you see it and love it as you do. Help us learn from you along the way, becoming more like you and together growing your kingdom as we live out your values. We believe that love is the priority and the core of your kingdom. Open our eyes and hearts to your love for us. Help us to see and love as you do. Equip us to love each other and your world. Help us to practice love by listening, encouraging and helping. We want to welcome others as you welcome us, with arms wide running to meet us and embrace us. Help us to put welcome into practice, encouraging others to join the journey. Above all, may we live out our lives as Jesus lived, with compassion, always aware of the needs of those less fortunate than ourselves, both near and far. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've enjoyed this very brief look at one of the parables, then you may like to know that for four consecutive weeks, beginning on the 11th of September, the Sunday service, Sunday morning services at Borden Methodist Church will each be looking at one particular parable. More information will be available later, including details of which parables we will be focusing services. You never know, you might see things you've never noticed before. In the meantime, there will be another 7 for 10 next Thursday, and please join us next Sunday for worship at 10.30, either in church or online. God bless you. Goodbye.